Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Indian Programmer on YouTube. And uh, in this uh, particular lecture, uh, continuing from where I left you in the previous lecture, I will be telling you about the Android operating system and uh, how you can develop the application. Uh, I will actually also be <coughs> making an Android application and will tell you the details. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, what, uh, the, before starting with the application development, uh, we, we need to know certain things. The first thing which we need to know is that uh, what Android basically is. So uh, you you all might uh, have used um, mobile phones. Nowadays uh, we use uh, smartphones. Smartphones are having uh, too much of capability earlier. The mobile phones were used only for calling, but nowadays uh, <laughs> we we don't need to uh, dial the number and use the um, services of the uh, provider, but uh, we can also call uh, through the different softwares that, that we install and uh, there are certain other softwares that we install on on the uh, mobile phone we can also install the games we can install lot many stuff on our android phone and our our mobile phone basically is, is uh, working as a uh, system nowadays so it, it is capable of lot many things and then just uh, being used for calling so there are a lot many applications which are run on the uh, on the mobile phone or the smartphone so that's why we, we call the mobile phones as the smartphones nowadays uh, because they are growing smarter uh, they, they have a large number of functionality and not just confined for calling uh, so uh, as you know that uh, you you are running uh, different applications suppose you want to write something then you can uh, save the the, doc, the document in the form of uh, the dot uh, docx file or the dot uh, doc file so means you can run uh, you can use uh, different different uh, piece of applications for using different different sort of extensions and different different sort of files uh, so what happens is that uh, basically the hardware of the mobile uh, understands uh, that uh, what the application uh, the what uh, the application which you're using is uh, meant for and uh, that all it understands uh, um, because of the operating system which is installed on on your uh, mobile phone so what happens is that the hardware directly cannot understand uh, the the applications uh, so uh, we need an interface uh, by which we can uh, if, if we want to use a particular application then we can uh, download that application and install that application and can use uh, that application on our smartphones like we can also use the camera applications uh, we use the Skype <coughs> so uh, we use Skype and different different softwares so all these are capable of uh, video calls also uh, so all these are applications so we can we can install different games also uh, so what happens uh, is that uh, you have a piece of software which is uh, first of all installed upon your hardware of the of the smartphone so this particular piece of software which is installed on the smartphones uh, is is the android operating system um, there are several other uh, sm uh, other operating systems also uh, which are being installed on the uh, smartphones like we have uh, the, uh, the iOS, the Apple uh, which means uh, the Apple mobile phones use uh, the operating system and, uh, and the Android uh, operating system basically is, uh, is, is the matter um, of our concern in this particular series so we will focus upon this only uh, so as I've told you that uh, Android basically is an operating system means that if we want to operate our system over here um, uh, what we mean by the system is that our our mobile our phone or the smartphone we can see uh, our device we can see so if we want to operate our uh, our mobile phone then then there needs to be a layer of the software that needs to be installed upon our our mobile phone and upon which uh, the different applications and the drivers uh, could be installed so what happens is that uh, we, we need to uh, have an Android uh, 
operating system on our mobile phones. So uh, the applications which we run upon are basically installed uh, through the operating system that is the Android operating system over here. Uh, we are going to talk about the developing of the applications which are made on, on, the, on the Android uh, uh, operating system. So uh, you can see that there is a lot many stuff and uh, uh, that, that I written um, and the basic thing is that it, it has uh, this platform mm, is, um, is uh, soft, uh, means is, is made by Google so means Google is uh, <coughs> is the one which is uh, uh, which is working behind the Android uh, development uh, Android uh, applications and op uh, Android operating system actually and uh, actually it acquired the uh, the Android from another company so that is not a uh, concern over here um, it is basically developed upon the, the uh, Linux kernel so uh, Linux actually uh, you can see that over everything that it is built upon the uh, Linux kernel so Linux is actually an operating system so its kernel has been used for the Android uh, and all these things it is op open source and all that stuff uh, so these are the several versions which which um, came one after the uh, other uh, with the passing of time. Uh, like we have the cupcake, uh, uh, which was the uh, Android 1.0, 1.1 to 1.5 uh, in the year the 2009. Uh, so after that uh, came the donut. Uh, so and then uh, came Eclair. So all these are the names of the different versions of the Android uh, sorry Android operating system that came one after the other. So after Eclair, the uh, Froyo, Gingerbread, uh, Honeycomb, Ice Cream Sandwich, the Jelly Bean, uh, and um, after that uh, Kit Kat, Lollipop, and nowadays Marshmallow, uh, which uh, which came in the year 2015. So Android is actually getting popular nowadays. Earlier, and the <coughs> iOS was the only one which was being used uh, by majority of the uh, population. But uh, nowadays, uh, um, Android has uh, taken the market of the uh, computers and has acquired the most 52% uh, of the market nowadays. So this is uh, what I was uh, telling you about so what happens is that uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, kernel uh, Linux kernel and uh, uh, then uh, the, we have the drivers the different drivers as I told you if you want uh, a certain um, feature a certain hardware feature like we want to uh, have the Wi-Fi connectivity if we want to have the uh, Bluetooth connectivity and that all then we need to have the drivers of that specific hardware uh, to make that hardware work uh, so uh, there is a hardware abstraction uh, layer which basically talks to the underlying hardware via this kernel so uh, this kernel is the Linux kernel by which it ta uh, talks so this uh, hardware abstraction layer is about the graphics the audio the camera the Bluetooth so all these all these hardwares are used by the drivers and there are native libraries so basically it uses the C, C++ libraries and uh, we can use the SQLite if you want uh, uh, certain uh, database oriented uh, software so SQLite is used um, different for different features we use different different li libraries if we want audio then we need some um, different library uh, if we want uh, hard uh, sorry database then we need different libraries to be installed and for media we need the media framework and that's all uh, so it's quite easy to understand now so there is basically a Dalvik virtual machine so what happens is that uh, is that uh, we, we use the concept of the virtual machines if you have studied about the uh, about the java programming then, then you might have come across the java virtual machine that is used uh, to make the applications uh, uh, platform independent and we only need to install uh, the virtual machine and uh, it is the responsibility of the virtual machine then uh, to convert the code into the intermediate uh, code and uh, take care of um, uh, 
uh, of the things and uh, it doesn't matter that uh, upon what platform you are uh, using the code so all this is done by the virtual machine a similar code is uh, similar concept is uh, used um, in, in, in Android also actually the applications which we make uh, in, in Android are also Java based applications that is uh, if, if the way we, we make the applications in Java in the same way we are going to make the applications uh, in, in Android uh, for an Android operating system um, and uh, and the applications uh, will be using java as a, as a programming language so if we have different different applications suppose we have the home screen we have the contacts we have the dialer we have sms camera media layer and the web browser so these different applications are there which are there on the top of the screen when you uh, see your uh, mobile so uh, these uh, uh, these uh, applications uh, use the framework via api calls so um, the api calls um, and uh, we have uh, the activity manager the window manager so activity uh, basically what an activity is uh, so you, you need to know that what an activity is uh, what a window is and uh, what a content provider is and all these things view so uh, what happens is that um, if you know, all these things would be uh, covered uh, as the time passes but uh, for now uh, let's suppose um, give up um, I, I sh should uh, give a brief idea so like what the term activity um, basically means um, if, if you if you open or you click uh, a particular application that is installed on on your smartphone then a screen will appear at a particular instance and that screen is uh, uh, the instance of that screen is is known as as an activity so if you if you uh, are running a particular application and a screen appears with different um, uh, views uh, actually we call views and uh, as in java i told you that we have the different components placed upon upon the uh, window in the similar in the similar ma manner um, we, we we call it uh, an activity a particular screen and uh, we have the different views so uh, view is analogous uh, to the different components so we can say that if, if we say the button uh, is a component uh, that is laid upon uh, on the on the particular uh, window or the frame in java then in the similar uh, manner the button is a view that is uh, laid upon and 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 our activity may have different buttons uh, we, it, it, it may have different edit text fields it may have different uh, text fields and um, that all things so that all these things will be covered later on uh, but uh, for now uh, let's uh, uh, let's uh, uh, know about uh, what the Dalvik is so as we know that um, there are certain um, certain issues uh, which we consider uh, while making uh, any new thing if, suppose you are the one who is uh, interested in making an uh, operating system then the things which you will uh, definitely focus upon is the security issue you will want that the, the each application uh, should have this uh, secure um, uh, security feature so uh, for that particular uh, reason what happens is that the applications uh, the android applications uh, run its in own process so uh, there is a particular uh, process uh, that that is associated with a particular application and the application uh, runs uh, in that particular process only and uh, with its own instance of the Jalvik virtual machine so what happens is that <coughs> every application has its own on instance of of the dvm the delic uh, virtual machine so um, all this uh, uh, see you uh, as you can see that i have mentioned over here that uh, every every android application run its own and its own process uh, so for this reason if, if there is a certain uh, application that is running so, so it is a different application than the other and uh, <coughs> Delvic has been written so that the device can run multiple uh, virtual machines uh, efficiently. So that was what I was trying to explain. That what happens is that every application has its own uh, virtual environment, and uh, so Delvic um, is the concept that originated and uh, that that came uh, into existence in order to uh, run the uh, multiple uh, virtual machines for multiple applications. 
Uh, so Telvec virtual machines executes files in the Telvec execute uh, <coughs> executable. So it is the .dex uh, format, uh, which is optimized for minimum memory footprint. Okay, so all this is um, pretty much uh, now um, understandable to you all. And the, the uh, one more uh, thing I would like to tell you is that uh, actually Android includes a uh, set of the core, core libraries as I've told you that uh, Android uh, application is written in Java so uh, if you run a particular uh, program uh, if you if you write a particular program in Java then you need to uh, have the classes uh, that are there in Java so uh, in order to use those classes uh, in Java uh, what you do is that uh, you, you, you use the libraries the associated libraries uh, uh, so that you can uh, your application runs successfully and uh, in the same way the Android includes a set of core libraries that provide most of the functionality available in the core libraries of the Java programming language so now let's come upon the responsibility of the Linux kernel so what happens is that the, the, the like, uh, virtual machine uh, relies uh, on the uh, Linux kernel for uh, underlying functionality such as the threading and the low level memory management so as you know that the, it is the function of the operating system to manage the memory um, if, if you have uh, gone through operating system as a subject in your engineering then you know all these um, responsibilities of, of the operating system in the similar way the all these uh, functionalities are performed by the Linux kernel and the, and the uh, Javan virtual uh, machine uh, relies upon the Linux kernel for all these responsibilities. Uh, now, uh, as we know that uh, what happens uh, <coughs> is that um, we, 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 wa we want uh, to have the uh, Java code or the Java uh, program. We, ha we want to have the application that is written uh, in the Java programming language for all that uh, re all that. Uh, um, reason uh, we, we, we need to install the JDK the Java development kit uh, because uh, if you don't install the JDK then we cannot uh, run the Java applications uh, so we need to install the JDK to write the Java and Android programs and write apps execute on the uh, Dalvik virtual machine so as I told you that what happens is that the, the concept of the uh, JVM uh, you all know that we have the Java virtual machine and the Java programs uh, run upon that applic uh, and then uh, uh, virtual machine uh, so what happens in the same way the Android apps execute on the Dalvik uh, virtual machine a clean room implementation of the JVM so it is <coughs> another implementation of the uh, JVM um, so Dalvik uh, optimized uh, for efficient execution so it, it is an optimized uh, version and uh, the, the java class uh, dot class that is the bytecode uh, uh, translated to the dalvik executable and uh, and then it is interpreted so so what happens is that the java dot class bytecode translated to the dalvik, dalvik executable and that the dex bytecode which dalvik interprets so linux kernel um, so all these um, yeah. It's getting a bit lengthy, so um, let's uh, come to something which is uh, easier to understand and uh, which, which makes uh, uh, you all um, feel nice to and easy. Uh. So th this is a fancy diagram um, diagram of uh, the presentation uh, which was there uh, in the previous uh, page also on the previous page also, but this is a, a quite fancy one. As it's looking, uh, the presentation is looking good. Uh, so what happens is that, that we have the application on the top. Uh, so we can have the home, the context, the phone, the browser, and all this, and the application framework, the activity manager, and all these things. And then we have the libraries. So now you you can understand that uh, why we need the libraries. As a <coughs> as as we have uh, gone through uh, this. Um, and the term library in the previous page also and <coughs> sorry uh, and uh, about the application framework also I have told you now so there are certain core libraries and the Dalvik uh, virtual machine also now it is clear to you all that what it then is the purpose of the uh, DBM is and the Linux kernel also uh, so all this is quite clear uh, hopefully quite clear to all of you so I've written this um, uh, details of this also so we have the applications um, 
And so, so uh, as we know that uh, we, we have the applications. Uh, um, we, uh, when we when we buy a particular mobile from from a particular shop, then it, it has uh, then you see that uh, uh, that there are certain uh, applications that are pre-installed. So uh, that's what we have written over here, and we can also install the different applications um, which which we if we want then uh, for our purpose and for different different reasons we can install in additional uh, applications on our smartphone uh, so for that reason we, we, we need the application framework um, so, uh, so it's quite clear that there are certain applications like the SMS program, the calendar, the maps, the browser, the contact and others are all applications which, which come along when you purchase a particular uh, Android based smartphone. Um, so what the application framework does by providing an open development platform actually um, Android is an open development platform that means um, anyone uh, can can uh, can develop uh, can use the platform and develop uh, as he wishes so Android offers developers the ability to build extremely rich and uh, uh, innovative applications developers are free to take advantage of their uh, device hardware so what happens is that uh, they can uh, use um, uh, they can take advantage of the hardware which is there install uh, sorry uh, they're integrated uh, with the uh, with the processor of the of the smartphone so we can run the background services set alarms uh, all the application framework is uh, usable uh, by the developers <laughs> so developers have the full access of this uh, same uh, framework API used by the core application. So uh, the core applications which we get uh, the, uh, with the uh, with the pre-installed with the uh, our smartphone, um, as they can access the, the framework in the same way. Other applications also have uh, the access. The application architecture is designed to simplify the reuse of the components. So. <coughs> Any application can publish its capabilities and any other application may then make use of uh, these capabilities uh, subject. Uh, so if there is no security issue then one application can interact uh, with other application also. And uh, so um, basically if we develop a particular application and then we have and then a particular application has the four basic components. The first one is the, uh, is the activity. So I've told you about the activity earlier. The activity is a single screen that is uh, visible to a user at a particular instance. So if you click a particular application, as you double click a particular application, and a screen appears uh, on your smartphone. So that particular uh, <coughs> that particular screen that is appearing on your smartphone is an activity. So uh, if you want uh, to to have an activity, if you want to have a particular screen, then then you need to extend the activity. So our activity class you need to extend and you need to override the on create method. So there is an on create method which is there in the activity class, and uh, we can we can oh, we need to override the on create method. So when an activity is created, and then the method uh, on create method runs uh, by itself, and uh, whatever we want uh, to be performed uh, on the creation of the activity, we need to write the code within the on create uh, method uh, when we are overwriting the on create method. <coughs> Secondly, as we know that uh, if, if we have certain number of applications running, <coughs> sorry, one second. Uh, so if we have uh, quite many applications running on our system, and then one, what happens is that uh, at a particular um, time what happens uh, most of them are running at the back and uh, one of them is there at the front end and rest are running at the back and um, uh, so there is also uh, a, a long running background part of app uh, not separate process or thread so it is not a separate process or thread actually I have uh, written all this in detail in the next few uh, pages <coughs> so uh, I will uh, go through all this. Uh, so there is a, but all I all I uh, wanted uh, to tell uh, you all now uh, was basically the four main components. So the first one was the activity. The second is the service. <coughs> the third is the content provider. So what happens is that our our application has a data 
So uh, we need to manage that data. So uh, the content provider, uh, uh, so the content provider is the one that uh, manages the app data, uh, usually stored in the database. So the database, uh, there is a particular place where we, where the uh, data of the application is, in, is stored, and that particular uh, space is the database. So we we have different uh, databases. So we use the SQLite uh, for that particular reason, and uh, the, the database. Uh, <coughs> is managed by the content provider and the data access for query is also <coughs> sorry and the fourth component is the broadcast receiver what happens is that um, if a there is a component and uh, there is a particular event that has occurred so uh, we, we need our uh, our system needs to uh, respond to that particular event for that particular reason it needs to know that the event has all actually occurred so it is uh, the responsibility of the broadcast receiver to uh, receive or to listen so what happens that the component that listens it is the component the broadcast receiver is the component that listens for a particular android uh, system events so uh, if there is a particular event that has occurred in the android uh, system uh, then then the component which listens to the particular event uh, occurring of that particular or the state change of the um, particular um, the, uh, component uh, is uh, actually um, we can say that the state changes when an event occurs so all these are listened by the broadcast receiver uh, for example if we have the uh, if our system found the wireless device or it and, and it needs to respond accordingly uh, so uh, all these things are uh, all means all these uh, components are the components which are responsible and are there in our application so these are the four components uh, in addition there is also an android manifest.xml uh, file so xml is a, a particular extensible uh, markup language uh, what happens is that <laughs> actually uh, xml uh, is uh, is a um, very very um, uh, deep uh, concept and uh, and uh, and for our particular Android development XML is a lot more is having a lot more importance than any other uh, place if, if you have um, gone through the um, HTML uh, hypertext markup language SGML or all those things uh, then at that particular time uh, you you must have gone through the XML also so I, it is actually a markup language um, all all uh, all this will be covered when I, I will go the, through the development of the applications and um, actually and uh, describing all this um, without uh, the practical implementation is uh, not that easy to uh, easy task to perform and uh, hopefully um, when, when I will make the application in the upcoming lectures and uh, then all this will be quite clear to you all and uh, <coughs> Uh, actually there are certain terms also if you see that uh, we have the <coughs> term manifest also so what uh, manifest basically is so all these things uh, also need to be uh, told uh, as we go through our uh, lecture series uh, it's not uh, in the right place to uh, describe all these so all the written a brief uh, description uh, about the manifest uh, so as I told that uh, there are the different components. Uh, so what happens is the manifest specifies the app activities and the services, uh, etc. And the permissions required by the app, uh, the minimum API required. So what is an API? What is the minimum API? So all these things will be covered when I when I go through um, the development uh, of, the, of the applications. Uh, for for now, I must um, tell you that, uh, as I've told you, uh, that there are different versions which came with the passage of time of the Android operating system, and the applications um, changed. The development of the applications changed, and uh, there were quite a uh, few of the components which were removed, and few new came into existence. So, if we, if we develop a particular application and we want it to run on uh, not uh, only to a particular or not only on a particular uh, version but we want the, uh, the application to run upon the previous versions also then 
we have to set the API version the, that is the maybe all this information actually is there in the manifest so it is a uh, uh, what we, when we when we say that manifest file then means it, it is having the information uh, related to the complete application so all the components uh, means there is a common place uh, where the information related to all these uh, components is stored so hardware features required example camera if the camera is needed fit autofocus I'm extremely sorry uh, so <coughs> So um, now um, there each each uh, each uh, activity actually has its life cycle. Uh, so uh, as you know that uh, when when you uh, click a particular application, then the activity appears, and uh, then we 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 actually uh, uh, extend the uh, the activity class, and then actually there are uh, several uh, different. Um, extended versions of the activity class then that can also be extended if we want uh, some additional features then we need not uh, 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 extend the activity but we can uh, in addition um, uh, we can also have have option to extend the different extended versions of the activity class and we can directly extend those versions in our application uh, so what happens is that uh, when the activity is extended uh, the activity class is extended and and the on create uh, method as I told you earlier um, is actually overwritten so the, the code which we want uh, to be executed when when the our activity um, <coughs> um, for the uh, if we run our activity for the first time uh, so what happens is that um, our on create method is executed uh, so when the activity is actually launched, uh, so what happens is that the on create method is the, it is the on on create method uh, that is executed for the first uh, for the uh, very first time, and then our uh, our activity basically starts um, by the on start method, and uh, <coughs> if if uh, if we want uh, uh, to uh, to resume our activity, then 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 we need uh, then the on resume uh, method is is actually executed so what happens is that uh, by the on resume method actually on resume method is used uh, <coughs> for uh, starting the for running the activity and the activity runs so so on resume method <coughs> is uh, executed after the on start method um, and the activity actually starts running uh, once the on resume method is is run so it's executed and the activity starts running so um, as i've told you that there might be uh, more than one applications at a particular time and that are running in parallel so if there is another activity that comes into the uh, foreground so what happens is that your um, activity will actually uh, pause so what will happen is that for that particular reason the on pause uh, method will be called and uh, <coughs> and the activity will be paused um, so uh, if, if the activity is uh, no longer uh, visible and um, the on stop method is called um, but uh, if 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 the you uh, um, the user uh, wants uh, to return back to the activity uh, then the on resume uh, method is again called and uh, if there is an application with higher priority and it's need, it, it needs uh, the memory that is being used uh, by the application which uh, is uh, being paused so what happens is that the application uh, process is scaled as I've told you that there is a different process a uh, separate process for each application and um, the, what happens is that this uh, this activity actually mm, the process of the activity is uh, killed if, if the memory which is uh, consumed while the while the activity is in the pause state and <coughs> and uh, the the user navigates uh, to the activity so uh, sorry one second and uh, really sorry and uh, and uh, in this particular case what happens is that the on create method is again uh, called and because the activity is actually killed and it it need to uh, being launched um, once again uh, so from the beginning on the on grade method is used uh, in case <coughs> when the activity is paused and it is not being killed then there are two options 
that it can directly resume itself uh, by uh, from the on pause um, to the on resume method and if, if the activity is uh, somehow no longer visible then what happens is that uh, the on stop method is called uh, so when the on stop method is called the user navigates uh, to the activity and then the on restart method is called so all these are the methods this is the life cycle and <coughs> So the on create method is the one it is called uh, for the first time uh, when the activity is launched. After that, the, all these um, steps um, are in the way in the sequence which I have told you. So if the on stop method is called, the activity is finished, <coughs> is finishing or being destroyed by the system. On destroy method is called if the activity is being destroyed and then finally the activity is shut down. So application components, uh, I've, I've told you the components earlier also, so mm, this is uh, the uh, description, the mm, and descriptive uh, and descriptions of the different components of the application. So <coughs> one of the feature of the Android um, application is that um, the one application can use the features of the other application for that reason. Uh, what happens is that uh, we we, did, we do not uh, need to instantiate that thing and means we do not have a single entry point we, we do not uh, need to call the main of that particular <coughs> uh, application um, a, a central feature of the Android is that one application can make use of the elements of the other applications uh, um, but uh, the thing which is needed is that uh, the permissions are there for the particular application to access the other application uh, means if the application permits then it can use the features of that for example if uh, your application uh, needs to display a scrolling list of the images and another application has developed a suitable scroller and make it uh, available to the others uh, you can call your uh, call upon that scroller uh, to do the work uh, rather than to develop your own your application doesn't incorporate the code of the other application or link uh, to it rather it simply starts uh, up that piece of other application so <coughs> it is not that the code of that particular application is need, needs to be incorporated but um, but actually what happens is that and the, and the other application is started within the first application so for this to work the system uh, must be able to start an application process when any part of it is needed uh, and uh, instantiate the java objects uh, for that part so we we, we are not uh, we don't need the whole complete application uh, within another application but we need a particular portion of the code a uh, particular uh, feature of that particular application and so if there is a particular application uh, which is having a single entry point that is the main and uh, then it is not possible <coughs> for for the application to to communicate in such a manner uh, for this particular reason what happens is that there is not a particular single entry point a main point uh, for the application so what happens um, for this to work the system must be able to start an application process when any part of it is needed uh, and, uh, ins and instantiate the java object for that part therefore unlike applications on most other systems and write applications uh, do not have a single entry point for everything in the application no main function for example rather than rather they have essential components that the system uh, can instantiate and run as needed so we have the essential components that the system can instantiate and run as needed uh, there are four types of the components so this I have discussed but I'm not uh, gone through in detail but now and later also I will go through all this in detail. So what happens is that um, Android uh, user interface has basically the activity. This I've told you that it is a, a single screen, a single user interface. Like and so, like if we if we talk about the uh, if you consider the email application, then at a particular time, at a particular uh, screenshot of that particular application, we have a single screen, and that screen might uh, might show the list of the new emails. So, as I've told you, that a single screen is called an activity. So, another activity to compose an email. So, if you want to compose an email, and then a separate screen comes uh, upon uh, on the four um, on. Uh, 
so what happens is that uh, that is another activity another activity uh, for reading emails if you want to read particular email then we can click on the inbox and that that particular um, the activity appears then if we click on the particular uh, email then also a new screen appears that is another activity that appears uh, so implement by a sub classing activity class so I've told you that uh, for all this we need to uh, to subclass the uh, activity class and there are several other options also so uh, extend activity class overwrite the on create method on pause method on resume method so java question machine can stop any activity without warning so uh, saving state is important so the activities need to be responsive otherwise android shows users app not responsive warning sometimes the, there is a warning that appears that the app has uh, stopped uh, responding and if you want to wait or if you want to end that activity um, uh, not activity but um, but uh, application uh, so an activity uh, presence of a so all this I've told I'm not going to uh, now uh, consider all this uh, so view also I've told you that uh, what a view basically is so a view basically is a particular component that, that you um, dra drag and drop upon the activity so as we have the frame in in the Java uh, swing applications and we, we we have the panel then and then upon the panel what we do we, we drag and drop uh, the certain components like we drag and drop uh, the buttons uh, the text fields uh, in a similar uh, way in uh, in in uh, Android also what I mean is that we, we, we first of all have a particular layout uh, out of the several options that are available uh, we first of all opt um, um, among the several options uh, for a particular layout um, and then uh, we can have the uh, we can drag upon them uh, the layout uh, and drag upon the activity and uh, uh, the l components like the text boxes the buttons the list uh, the radio boxes and all that um, spinners um, so, uh, and uh, even embedded uh, web browsers also so, so the UI contains a hierarchy of views so actually there is a hierarchy of views so view is a class subclass uh, by the drawable object uh, in the user interface the view object uh, may have an uh, integer ID associated with it actually what happens is that if we want if we have more than one uh, suppose we have uh, five buttons in a particular page on a particular page and we want to to uh, respond to a particular um, uh, button so we need to know that which button has been clicked so uh, actually the xml um, <coughs> the xml of that particular uh, uh, button uh, needs to have a particular id so that particular uh, ID is uh, the one which would be used uh, while coding uh, to to respond or to uh, to <coughs> have the desirable uh, task done uh, for record and the, uh, the uh, particular view that is the button uh, is is um, being recognized uh, by the particular ID. So uh, in the XML, what we write is that Android ID equal to and then we have this uh, double inverted and then at the rate plus id it means that uh, this is a new id and um, suppose it is a button then we can name that as uh, my button uh, like uh, in the html if you have a particular button then what happens is that uh, y what you do is um, you, you um, yeah, use that button and for using that button uh, you, you need to uh, you need to single single out that button in the same way uh, we have single out the button by its id and now when we use uh, it in the java code so what uh, in the java file so for that uh, uh, we uh, we have a reference uh, we, uh, uh, to that particular um, view or the in this case uh, in, in particular we have the uh, reference to that particular button so it would uh, be also as we are we want to refer to a particular button so we will typecast it to button and uh, we will use a method which is called the find view by id so find view by id actually <coughs> actually find uh, view by id is the method which is going to find uh, the particular button as i've told that the button over here is a view um, so uh, and it is uh, being um, searched by its ID so this is the method name and uh, actually our 
R is a dot class file, and uh, this uh, this uh, file has uh, the information about the ID. So ID dot uh, my underscore button, <coughs> and then this particular uh, uh, this particular button uh, will be searched out, and uh, mm -hmm. and it would be used by the uh, referred by the name my button in the java code so uh, to get the reference of the view of the object in activity so <coughs> of the view object sorry so uh, the object over here is the uh, sorry and the view over here is the button and um, and the view object uh, needs to be referred so for that particular reason uh, we are uh, writing all this code so and uh, now let's come upon to the service <coughs> Uh, actually, um, if if you are not able to understand this right now, but uh, and then also you do not panic because a bit very soon, uh, <coughs> in the next uh, one or one and a half hours uh, of the lecture, uh, you would understand all all these things uh, without any pain. So, uh, so need not worry right now. Uh, actually, another said we we should talk about the service. So it is the background operation. So it actually runs on the background. So it is in background operation. Uh, if you want to play music in the background while the user is in a different application, so we can use in a particular application on the fore end. But uh, we can also play the music at the uh, background. So this is a service that has been run to so fetch data over the network without uh, blocking user interaction with an activity. So if you are running a particular activity, you are uh, working upon a particular application, and uh, there is a particular screen of that application that you're running on, <coughs> on the top of your um, uh, Android smartphone then uh, then you need not uh, stop that uh, particular application uh, to run uh, or uh, to work over the internet um, uh, sorry over the network um, so this is what we have written that uh, if, we, if, if the data is coming across uh, network uh, from the network or it is going to the network and then also then the service is running at the background and uh, it is uh, <coughs> not uh, uh, means uh, it is uh, interrupted by the by the uh, this particular data fetching of the data releasing the, over the network. Uh, underlying all applications is a set of services and system including views. So underlying all the applications we have um, the set of services and systems including views. A service doesn't have a, a visual user interface, but rather runs in the background. So as we know, the, the activity is in the foreground and it has a visual user interface. But the service is something which it doesn't have that particular visual interface. And it, it is uh, over there on the background. So there is a content provider, so database or other data access. So what happens is that there is a content provider. Um, so what actually a content provider is if you need a particular content that is you need a particular set of data and then it is the responsibility of the content provider to provide that particular uh, set of data uh, so that's what we've written that uh, it enables applications to access data from other applications so there is a particular application that is running and it needs the data from some other application uh, <coughs> such as contact if, if, if it needs uh, the contact uh, then it can uh, take from the contact portion of your uh, uh, of the uh, say of your mobile phone and uh, or to store their own data if it, if it wants to store its own data then also it can store the content provider makes a specific set of, of, of the applications uh, data available to other applications so the content provider what it does is that it makes a specific set of the applications uh, data available to other applications uh, and the uh, Android uh, <coughs> ships uh, with a number of the content providers for common data Type suppose if we if we have different different types of uh, data type, if we want to have the, the audio uh, or the video, or the image, the personal contact information so for this and write chips a number of the content providers. The broadcast receiver, I've told you the broadcast receiver that uh, if there is a particular event uh, uh, for that particular reason, um, uh, to respond uh, to the system messages and uh, means if there is a particular. Uh, message uh, that is occurring and then we need to then, that, uh, then the application needs to respond suppose there is a battery low a broadcast receiver is a component that does not uh, that uh, does nothing but uh, receive and react to the broadcast announcements so many broadcast uh, 
on the antenna system Kurt for example announcing the time zone has changed and the battery is low all these are <coughs> The picture has been taken or that the user changes the language uh, preference all this uh, so resource manager besides this there is a resource manager also so providing access to the non-code resource so uh, such as uh, localized strings so resource manager oh but it's it's um, it's a very big topic uh, resource manager but over here i have uh, written it in uh, such a brief uh, way that um, because um, and the resources, there are different resources and all those resources need to be managed. Um, so over here, just I want to tell you that there is a particular resource manager and then the finally we, we, we have the in, indents. And so what are indents basically? And there, is, there are messages and the past. So what happens is that the activities, the services and the broadcast receivers, all these are, are activated by asynchronous messages. All these messages are asynchronous and are called intents and intent is an intent object that uh, holds the content of a message of the message for activities and services it names the action being requested and uh, specifies the URI of the data uh, to act on among other things uh, for example it might uh, convey a request uh, for for an activity to to present an image uh, to the user or <coughs> or let the user edit some text so for this means we, we, we pass the messages means there are messages which are being passed among uh, the services or the activities or the receivers um, so these are what called indents uh, there is a notification manager so that enables all applications to display custom alerts in the status bar actually there is a status bar in open uh, which uh, there are notifications which we which which are there and uh, there is a particular notification uh, manager that enables all the applications to display this uh, custom alerts uh, in the status bar. So there is an activity manager that manages the lifecycle of the applications and provide a common navigation back uh, stack. There's a back stack. <coughs> so now let's um, see about uh, the um, uh, structure of the application. Uh, but uh, actually, I feel that I must stop over here now and all this will. Uh, we continue in the next upcoming lecture. So thanks for watching. Uh, good day.